Even before his ascension, Bela IV tried to attempt damage control on his father's actions, but he would be blocked from doing so at every turn by his father. So when Bela IV finally ascended to the throne in 1235, his project was to re-establish the old royal authority and remove his father's new institutions. He purged the royal court, stripped titles and confiscated lands of Andrew's closest advisors. He symbolically had the royal council's chairs burnt so that everyone present except the king would have to stand and Bella IV attempted to reconstruct the administrative defensive system that Andrew II had left in complete shambles. The problem Bella IV ran into was that a lot of the nobility didn't want the old system back. They quite enjoyed lands and titles given in perpetuity, and nobody really had much interest of giving up any of their land for some of the more unfortunate nobles, not even the king. It seemed as though Bella's reign was heading for an internal reckoning, but a crisis was brewing in the east. Two years into his reign, a large group of Kumans requested to settle in Hungarian lands. They had been pushed out of their lands to the east by an ever-encroaching foe. They promised to swear loyalty to the king, even becoming Catholic, all if Bella would grant them protection. Bella IV agreed, but this was another spanner in the works as it made people in the realm more discontent that he allowed a foreign nomadic tribe with no conceptions of European property rights to live in the realm. In 1240, the Mongols conquered Kiev. In 1241, they headed into Poland and Hungary. In early March, the defenses in the east were broken and the Palatine of Hungary defeated. As the Mongols advanced quickly, the Kumans in the kingdom were attacked and killed under accusations that they were in cahoots with the Mongols. The royal army under Bela IV met the Mongols under Batu Khan at the Battle of Muhi and was utterly defeated. The Palatine, the Archbishops of Estragom and Kalosha, were only a few among the influential and highborn who died in the battle. Bela's brother Coloman, the Duke of Slavonia, died as a consequence of the wounds. Because of the death of so many notables of the realm, one chronicler wrote of the year 1241 that the Kingdom of Hungary was destroyed by the army of the Tartars. Having survived the battle, Bela ran for his life across the kingdom for the rest of the year 1241. Bela IV ran from Muhi to Pressburg, through Austria, down to Croatia and into Dalmatia. Along the way, as he was frantically running from the Mongols, he was screaming for help in his letters to French King Louis IX, Emperor Frederick II, and Pope Gregory IX. But they were too busy with their own affairs. Bela IV did find many a refuge among his subjects, who he later rewarded. There are many legends among the minor nobility who later claimed to trace their status to being rewarded by Bela IV. They became known as the nobility of the plum, because they, by legend, fed Bela IV with plums. In a more famous case, he rewarded the town of Gradetz, the upper town of the future Zagreb, with privileges of a free city immediately the next year, with the golden bull of Bela IV. The free city status meant that the city and its inhabitants only owed loyalty to the crown and were not subject to anyone else but they had a duty to build newer and stronger walls in case of future invasions. While in a more controversial case, he rewarded the city of Togir with lands belonging to the city of Split, adding fuel to the fire of a conflict between the two cities. Many nobles were brought to even greater prominence for aiding the king, among them the dynasty of the lords of Kirk, more and more to be known as the Frankopan dynasty. But suddenly in 1242, the Mongols withdrew. The great Khan Ogadai had died, and Batu Khan, probably thinking he'd be back later, withdrew. The Mongol invasion was a punch to the guts and an utter catastrophe for Bela IV and for the realm of St. Stephen at large. In fear of another Mongol invasion in the near future, Bela abandoned his reactionary policies and decided to revoke his revocation of Andrew II's policies. 
During the invasion, he saw the inadequate old administrative and defensive system completely collapse and quite literally die, and he needed to create a new one. The small bands of defenders of small earth and wood fortifications needed to be replaced, for I think obvious reasons, as a lot of them did not exist anymore. But large stone castles and strong armies of armored knights required large parcels of land to maintain them, and so Bella IV increased the amount of land he gave away, compared to his father. Some went to large landholders who were expected to maintain castles and their own forces, smaller portions of land were allocated to new individual knights and other minor nobles who fought as part of a greater nobleman's force, or again banded together into the communities of the minor nobility, the whole uh, municipality, county, parish, Rupania situation from a few episodes back. I would like to emphasize that like those of his father, there were few to no conditions attached to these land grants, so the great nobility had great leeway in how they would obey the king. It also didn't help that a part of the mid and minor nobility was now demanding a greater say in how the realm was run, asking to reaffirm the Bull of 1222 and hold more frequent assemblies. But for now, Bella IV was keeping everyone in line. Bella IV also decided to tie himself closer to the Kumans in order to gain the services of their light cavalry. For this purpose, he married his son Stephen to Elizabeth, a Kuman princess. The Kumans would, as the Hungarians did, assimilate into the settler lifestyle within a few centuries, after some time of difficulty, but we'll get to that. Soon a new wave of European settlers arrived, among them French, Italians, Poles, Germans, who again settled in the, now again, sparsely populated areas. I will note that the realm had constant immigration through these centuries, just that in this current situation there was an uptick in the availability of land. After rebuilding and consolidating, Bela IV found himself with a big army, but no Mongols to fight, and so he decided to use it elsewhere. He again tried to expand Arpad influence into the Balkans, which resulted in a vassalized realm under his son-in-law, a Russian prince by the name of Rostislav Mikhailovich Rurikid, an ousted prince of Novgorod, who first arrived in Hungary after the whole of the Kievan Rus collapsed before the Mongols. Rostislav Mikhailovich Rurikid served in Bela's court his bound of Slavonia and married Bela's daughter Anna. He would later attempt to carve out a realm for himself in the Balkans, but as interesting as his whole life story appears to be, we'll have to skip over it, but keep the pair in mind. Bella also married his daughter Elizabeth to Henry XIII, a Duke of Bavaria. Keep them in mind as well. With the reconstructed army, Bella fought a war to regain his lands, which Duke Frederick II of Austria had snatched from him during the Mongol invasion. After Frederick died at the Battle of Leifa River, another war started against King Ottokar II Plemsil of Bohemia over the inheritance of Frederick II of Austria, which Bella ultimately lost. The war resulted in Bella's son, Stephen, being kicked out of his dukedom of Styria and was given the dukedom of Transylvania as a consolation title. While as part of the peace deal, Ottokar married Bella's granddaughter, Kunigunda Rostislavna. Stephen was clearly not enamored with his move to Transylvania, so he started to conspire and rebel against his father. Bella tried to console Stephen by giving him the title of Younger King and power over almost all of the Eastern Kingdom. But Stephen was still not happy. Things came to a head in 1264 when son did battle against father, and after two years of war, Bella and Stephen made peace, Bella giving Stephen a freer hand in running the affairs of the kingdom. This led to Stephen directing the kingdom's foreign policy, which meant more war in the Balkans, but it also meant that Stephen was arranging marriages and alliances. A grand alliance was made with Charles I d'Anjou, king of Sicily, when Stephen married his son Ladislav to Charles's daughter Isabella and his daughter Mary to Charles's son 
Charles. Stephen V inherited the kingdom after Bella IV's death on the 3rd of May 1270. Stephen's reign would mark the start of a period known as the feudal anarchy. Upon his succession, a group of powerful nobles started a rebellion and called on King Ottokar II of Bohemia to help them. After a few initial victories, Ottokar managed to capture the royal treasury. After a few subsequent defeats, Ottokar retreated and left the kingdom to Stephen. This was followed by the Ban of Slavonia, Joachim Gutkeld, kidnapping and imprisoning the very young heir apparent, Prince Ladislav, and holding him hostage in the castle of Koprivnica. Whatever Joachim's plan was, it ultimately came to a stop after Stephen V died in August of 1272, and Joachim was forced to return the now child king to the court. But by the kidnapping of the heir apparent, Joachim's actions signaled a very grave situation. The king had completely lost control over his vassals. The crown passed to the young Prince Ladislav, now Ladislav IV, the Kuman, and the realm spiraled further into chaos. Meanwhile, after decades of consolidating their power and lands, the Shubich dynasty, the lords of Pribir, used this opportunity to rise to their medieval heights. Soon after Ladislav IV succeeds the throne, the regency appoints Paul Shubich, Lord of Bribir, and a lot of other places, as Ban of Dalmatia and Croatia, a position he will hold for over 30 years, and that will be just the start.